taking a second sample. 9.2 of the of the acetone and 0.8 milliliters of water. Take one of these uh, TLC plates, just touching the side of the of the plate, and carefully placing on a clean uh, surface, and make a line, the sample line, which is about one third of an inch from the bottom of the bottom of the plate and I will follow exact same diagram I have in the on my paper. So I have the TLC plate, I draw the line and I made uh, four um, dots here where that that uh, those are the places that for my the, the sample I also changed the background so you could see it better um, through the camera I made the second table also uh, a TLC plate with the line and the spots when you are trying to spot the the TLC plate the spotting this plate that means you are putting the sample on assigned area like i have in this diagram my first and i'm going from left to right the first one the first spot on the left is going to be acetaminophen the second one is going to be aspirin the third one is going to be uh, ascorbic acid and the last one is going to be unknown so i'm keeping the exact same pattern on my TLC plate because I cannot write on the plate. And when we are spotting, the size of the spot matters. We don't want large spots because then it will uh, get mixed as they develop. And if it's too small, we cannot see it. So what I do, I just use a capillary tube and place in the liquid, the solution that is already prepared by the lab for you. We are going to place the, the sample and just touch the, the line or touch the spot. You can do that two times to get like desired size of the spot and move on to the next sample. So next sample. It's going to go on the next spot. So I'm trying to show you just, just like that. Just you touch once there's small um, circle that it kind of generates. There, you do one more time. Okay, now it's visible, you could see it. Then you move to the third sample. This solution will be prepared by the lab. It's just the solution of those samples in alcohol. And this would be the spot number three. And you can practice this on using like a filter paper, um, or if one of the sample gets like too large of a spot, you can always make a, a second uh, plate. So, That's why I kind of, I have a second plate here. I'm going to actually use my second plate because one of the spots got a little uh, larger than what I, I wanted. It's not touching the others. I will still develop it, but to me, it's kind of too large. Um, I will also prepare my second sample, which is identical to the first one. Just repeating for second trial. I don't need both samples, whichever comes out better, I will use for my data analysis. Okay. One, acetaminophen. Two is acetyl salicylic acid. You don't have to hold it. I'm only holding it up because of the camera, I wanna make sure that uh, you could see it. 
what you could do, you can place that on the table and you just bring your capillary to an spot. And the last one is our unknown. Okay, the size of these sample looks better for me. And now my sample is ready. I'm going to place inside the, the uh, developing chamber, each one separately. You don't want this to touch the, the surface, to touch the filter paper. Just want to make sure that stays still. You should not disturb it because if you disturb it, the liquid is going to make wave. And as the liquid makes wave, it can also uh, make, the line is not going to be like a straight line as it's going up. The more saturated the solution is inside the, the developing jar, also the line that is going to go up is going to be more smooth and a straight line. Because if it's not saturated, as it goes up, it also evaporates at the same time. So it's, there's like competition between like liquid moving up and evaporation. And you would see line that is not very organized, it's not a straight line. So I'm going to use my second trial sample, also place in the next developing jar, touching the side of the TLC plate only, and let it develop. I want to disturb it going to stay and wait. And if you could see, now the liquid is moving up. And as the liquid reaches, liquid meaning that the, the mobile phase in uh, chromatography, as it reaches the sample, is going to move up the uh, sample as well. Well, for the purpose of the video, to be sure, I will pause the video at this point and I get back to you when it reaches about one inch from the top of the plate. So now the, the mobile phase has gone up and uh, we are ready to stop the developing. And as soon as we take out, we have to mark the solvent front, which is the distance solvent has, has traveled. So carefully, we are going to just use a ruler and draw a line where the solvent travels. Because as soon as it dries up, you see that that line, it, it disappears from the, the wet paper, wet plate to the dry plate. Um, line is going to disappear. I would do the same for this plate, remove, and you could see this separation now the wet area versus the dry. But if we wait too long, that line would disappear. And we cannot lose that line because that is the solvent front we are using for our calculation. Okay. Just want to show you this plate, how the line disappeared. If I didn't have the drawn line, you couldn't see where that's how far the solvent has traveled. So we let the, so the mobile phase or the solvent to dry. And the next step would be visualization. And since these compounds, they, um, they uh, would show, they, they are visible under the UV light. Uh, basically the, the powder that we have embedded here, um, they are, fluorescent and they are shiny and they are going to show up under the UV light. And this sample is going to show as a dark, dark spot. That's what we are going to, um, to see under the UV lamp. So let's take this to the UV lamp. OK, 
Okay, now we have both plates under the under the UV light, and you could see that if you remember when I said we don't want like a big drop. You see, when you have like a big drop, it's going to show you know a bigger spot, and it would make it harder for us to calculate or measure the uh, measure the distance. And uh, fortunately. The, the size of the drops, they were not too big because if they are too big, then, then they are going to kind of submerge. They are going to combine the two uh, samples together if the, and then it would show as like one bulky uh, spot there, one big spot there, which makes it impossible to calculate or to, to measure the distance. And if I take this place out of the UV lamp, is not going to show the spot. So I'm gonna to have to use my pencil here and mark and circle around the, the spots here. And just, you know, you, as long as you're consistent in measurements, you should be fine. But what I do, I circle the darkest spot and then I measure from the center of the darkest spot to the baseline, center of the dark spot to the baseline, same thing here, center to the to the baseline. You could do the tip, tip or tip and, and the spot, or you could do the darkest uh, center of the darkest point for, uh, for each one. And I'm going to also mark these circles right here, spots here. That's the one with the big drop that I didn't like, and that's why I, repeated or I made the two samples. So um, what you are comparing here, how far they traveled. Uh, and the, the unknown is the last spot. It's very obvious that this unknown now is very similar to the sample two. And then based on the diagram, you can say what your unknown is. Beside this, because it's very obvious now just by visualization, what I want you to do also, I want you to look at the structure of these compounds in the lab manual, I provided in the lab manual, but I want you to justify which one is more polar and say which one, and talk about in your lab report, which one is more polar, which one is less less polar, and justify the, the travel distance by each of the sample based on the polarity of this sample against the polar stationary phase and the mixed solvent that, that we have. The mixed solvent that we have is acetone and water, and you can also um, include that. And the polarity of each of the solvent is included in the uh, in the lab manual, and you can interpret your data. You do need the the distance traveled for each of the samples, which I will make the lines. I will draw the lines and provide to you as a a picture, so you can. Um, you can record those uh, those numbers and uh, use those numbers to do the calculation for the RF value. 